So, you've come here today to talk about sex. Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about our stuff. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that may be. <laughs> Hi, I didn't see you there. I did really, it was all a setup. But today, we're going to talk about sex. Intimacy with an ostomy might be one of the things that you were worried about before your surgery or if you haven't had it yet, you might be really worried about it. Whether you're in a long-term relationship or you're single, it is probably something that you've thought about. And yeah, it can be really daunting to think about bearing your body with this new thing attached to your stomach in front of someone that is either new to you or someone that you've been with for a long time and you love and you're still worried about those sort of body issues. I think in our society we've got enough body issues to worry about without that added thing of a stoma or an ostomy bag. But pretty much in life I think it's almost a guarantee that people perceive us differently than we perceive ourselves. So I'm lucky enough to be in a long-term relationship with someone who is really understanding about body issues. And he has said to me that before my surgery, he was a bit worried about whether he would still find me attractive with this stoma attached to my stomach. Actually, his fears weren't necessary. He said that he looked at my stoma as something that had saved my life whether you've got cancer and that's the reason you've got your stoma or you've got it because of IBD or some other condition you've had it to, to help you to save your life to make your life so much better and hopefully the people around you will be able to see that and they won't be bothered by this new alien sort of thing that you've got attached to your body How do you broach the subject with a potential sexual partner that you have got a ostomy bag or a stoma? Um, that's a really good question and one that I've got no experience in because like I said I am in a long term relationship. But I can only say that hopefully the person that you're interested in once you do start to sort of broach the subject, they are nice enough and open-minded enough to embrace it. They might be a little bit scared, a little bit um, interested, sort of wondering what it's gonna look like. And, you know, if they've got a problem with you, then is that person really worth being with? probably not. If they do have a problem with it you might want to reconsider your interest in them because you want to feel comfortable you know this whole journey can be difficult enough as it is without somebody else's perception of us sort of tainting our own feelings towards ourselves and we deserve the kind of love and intimacy that everybody else gets in their life. It will more than likely take you a while to feel like you're ready for any sort of intimacy. Obviously you're still getting over a major surgery, you've got a wound on your stomach that is, you know, potential for infection and things and you're just not going to feel that comfortable. There are going to be some sort of physical limitations. But when you do start to feel ready, I would say just try, you know, getting unchanged in front of the person if you're in a relationship. You don't have to go straight in for the kill and get all your kit off the first time you're going to get intimate. If the person you're with is used to just seeing you sort of half naked or naked with your bag on or your stoma out, it's going to be easier when it comes to that time when you are ready for intimacy. If you talk to the person you're with or if you talk to a potential person that you're going to get intimate with, you can sort of talk about all the things that you need to talk about. Communication is key. It's key for any part of a relationship anyway. And it's actually something that people talk about and they need to suss things out whether they've got a stoma or not. 
So you need to feel comfortable, you need to feel good in your own skin and you need to know that the person you're going to take this step with is on the same page as you and they're going to be supportive and caring. If you're a single ostomate and you are thinking about getting out there or back onto the scene, there are actually quite a few sites where you can meet fellow ostomates. So there's none of this uh, awkwardness that you might be feeling, thinking, how do I tell this person? Are they gonna accept me? Are they gonna reject me based purely on my stoma? So I'll just put the details below of those sites. At first, I was really, really conscious of my stoma. Um, it depends on how active you are, I suppose, in the bedroom. If you're super active and, you know, you're swinging from the chandeliers and on top of the wardrobe and stuff, you might want to just be a bit wary of your stoma. If you're more like me and you sort of feel like you belong in the 40s, then you're probably going to be okay. Like they didn't swing from the chandeliers in the 40s. Try to reassure your partner that the things they're going to do to you Try and reassure your partner that the things they're going to do to you aren't going to hurt your stoma. Just talk to them about any concerns they might have because they might feel like some things aren't going to be possible. They might be sort of tiptoeing around you and you just want to get all vigorous and sexy and they might be worried about if they're going to hurt you. You know how it feels and you need to express to them that it's okay. Just make sure you keep the lines of communication open while you are being intimate and then if you do feel a bit funny, let the person know and they'll let you know if they feel a bit wary and hopefully you can just move forward from there. After surgery you're going to find that there are some physical limitations, there might be some sexual dysfunction. Um, if you're a woman you might have dryness and pain with intercourse and also if you've had some radiotherapy if you've got your stoma due to cancer that can actually um, stiffen the muscles of the vagina so it will make it harder for penetration and just ask for some dilators and you start with the smallest one using a bit of intimate lubricant and you gradually go up over a period of months to the biggest size and then um, intercourse is gonna be much less painful and pretty much the same as it was before, hopefully. Men, it is possible to have some erectile dysfunction but this will ease off with time as will uh, dryness and pain with women. If you are experiencing any of these things and you want to talk to your stoma nurse or doctor then they will be able to help you and just try not to be embarrassed because they've talked about this stuff with so many other patients before and it's an important part of your life. You need to feel comfortable and you need to feel good. You might be worried about the smells I mean, that's really something that you might be worried about in general anyway. I have found that usually I'm the only one that can smell it. If you feel more comfortable, you can use one of the little stickers that come with bags and put that over the filter. But do bear in mind, if you are gonna sort of trump in the middle of anything and your bag balloons, it's not gonna go flat again if you've got the sticker on. As far as positions go, what I have read online is that there's nothing really out of bounds. What you could do before is pretty much gonna be the same as what you can do once you've got your stoma. I think for ladies, missionary position is gonna be a little bit harder. Um, you've got your bag, it's right there, you know, you've got someone sort of really close to your stomach where your wound is. Um, there are better positions than missionary position. It's really gonna be up to you finding out what does and what doesn't work. And hopefully you're just gonna have a patient partner. You're gonna see the sort of humor in it. I've had a couple of moments where I have trumped quite loudly. <laughs> and at first I was absolutely mortified, but actually it just turned into something funny. If you can sort of laugh and see the funny side and not take yourself quite too seriously then you're going to have a nice time and you're going to feel comfortable with the person you're with.
If you've had your rectum removed, obviously that is gonna take anal sex off of the table. So if you're a gay man, then this is something that you're gonna to have to think about. If you've still got your rectum intact, you will need to speak to your stoma nurse or the surgeon or a doctor just to find out how this is gonna work with anal sex because it might not be possible for you, but you just really need to find out before you try anything. Um, this is gonna sound really horrible, but I have read about it on NHS and the American Cancer Society. Don't have penetrative sex with the stoma, okay? It's horrible, you may laugh, but obviously it's something that people have tried, so I'm just putting it out there now. Don't do it. You can get pouch covers for your bag, um, and this might be something you really wanna consider if you use clear transparent bags with no sort of fabric on the front. I tend to use the ones that are all covered in fabric anyway. So I don't use pouch covers, but that's something you can look into. I'll put some addresses down below, and you can also make them as well. If you're a bit handy with a needle and thread, give it a go. I'd go for a unicorn design, or maybe a sexy... I've also read that women can try wearing a camisole or a teddy type thing that's obviously open, or you can go crotchless if that's your thing. Um, that way your top half, you know, your abdomen is covered and it's up to you how much you want to sort of let the other person see. I haven't got anything particularly pretty or lacy yet. Um, in the beginning, if I wanted to be intimate, I would just put on my Pelican waist support band and that sort of gave me a bit more confidence my bag wasn't exposed. But actually now I just sort of, well, I just don't use anything to cover it up. I'm not ashamed. And obviously the person I'm with is really comfortable with me having my stoma and it doesn't bother him at all. So I know I'm quite lucky in that. If you're a man, you might just want to try wearing some sort of vest, maybe the first few times if you're with somebody. Um, it's all really up to you. It's all about feeling comfortable in your own skin and that can take a while when you've got a stoma, but never let anyone let you feel that you're less than sexy. It is possible to go through pregnancy if you've got a stoma. Um, you will need to just talk to a nurse or your doctor beforehand because there are various things that might need to be addressed depending on exactly what sort of surgery or stoma you've got. I honestly think the biggest part of intimacy when you've got a stoma is that body image. It's about how you're gonna feel inside. It's not about how you're gonna feel physically because things are gonna get good again and you're not gonna have to worry about that part of it. But it really is that psychological, emotional aspect that I think worries people. I think as long as you are open and honest with the person that you're intimate with, then you're gonna be fine. If you are single and you meet somebody and you think you might wanna take things further, I think it's important to talk to them, tell them that you've got a colostomy bag or an ileostomy and just let them know how you're feeling about yourself and say, you know, you feel a bit nervous or you're a bit apprehensive about it and just sort of gauge how they're reacting to you. Hopefully they're a lovely person and they're interested in you. They're not having a relationship with your stoma. That's a private and personal relationship between you and your stoma. <laughs> I love butt face. So, thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoy the sex that you do have and keep intimacy in your life. Well, I hope you found this interesting and helpful. I know that it's not easy for everybody to talk about sex. I'm not the best at it, but for you guys, I'll break my prudity. That's not even a word. And above all else, enjoy yourself. Toodaloo.